Welcome to this video. We are going to talk about algae today, algae in pots, algae and vendaceous orchids. And as part of the orchid lingo series, I am moving this video forward a little bit because a comment from Andy Land made it relevant for me to bring this video forward as opposed to when I had planned on airing it. Anyway, algae and orchid roots and algae on leaves. This is mainly a chatty video. Forgive me for not having any proper footage to show you because 80% of my collection is in white pots with white masks and those that are on mounts, etc. I don't have that much algae to show you as much as I have on my Holcoglossum kimberlianum, which we are looking at while we discuss the subject of algae and our orchids. So forgive me for not that much footage. But let's get into this. If you grow your orchids in transparent pots, it is more probable that you will have algae growing in your pots at some point. You see, algae thrives in the presence of good light, good fertilizer, and water. And when I speak of water, that will always include the humidity factor. And the transparent pots that we normally see orchids grown in with several holes in the sides to provide ventilation and some airflow provides all of these three. So if you have algae in your pot, your orchid is probably pretty happy. You can see how the symbiosis of algae and orchid roots work hand in hand. Algae will only develop if the climate in the pot is healthy. Now let's get into this whole thing about algae in the pot or on our roots. While the presence of algae is less, it can actually be beneficial to your orchid pot because it will trade gases, releasing oxygen into the environment. And oxygen around our roots, we know, is an added bonus because they thrive on air circulation and need oxygen to function properly. In addition to that, algae has an added benefit because it consumes some of the toxins that the orchid releases and feeds on the decaying roots, which keeps the pot cleaner. The indication of algae in your pot is that you are watering and fertilizing your orchid properly, and the roots have sufficient light. That is why there's a lot of algae on our new orchids when we newly purchase them coming from a nursery. There would be more in those situations than there is in our home environments. The nursery's level of humidity are much more constant and higher than we can provide in our homes. So algae in your pot or even on mounted orchids, bare root orchids as my example with Holcoglossum kimberlianum is a great sign. Even if growing in full water culture, leaving a little bit of original algae in the container can raise the oxygen level Level. One more added benefit of algae in the pot is it provides a balance between good and bad bacteria referring back to the previously addressed point of algae feeds on decayed matter in the pot including roots that may have served a purpose and have died. So having said all that why is algae being slammed as the big baddie on our orchid roots and in pots or whatever kind of setup be it mounts that you have your orchids in or on? Why is it that we want to remove algae when out in nature orchid roots have all sorts of gunk on them because the roots age and accumulate algae moss etc. From everything I have already mentioned the one word that should stand out was the word balance. If the equilibrium of the pot is in a ratio with how much or how little algae has grown, then algae brings all the benefits as previously mentioned, but there's that word again. If the algae is doing so well, living la vida in the pot, then this is where algae gets blamed for everything and turns into the boogeyman for our orchids. Because if we grow in clear pots, with little or no protection around to block the light, it is true that algae will have a field trip in the pot and once the algae builds up on the sides of the pot, no light can penetrate through and this could then factor into causing our roots to die. Algae living its best life grows fast and when algae have built up inside the pots to such an extreme, there is no room for air circulation anymore. And the emphasis here is on the word extreme. In this situation, there would be no more room for air circulation 
circulation. But even as we water, we pour oxygen into the pot, so our roots are still getting their oxygen fix. But the algae is working against itself because it does not have room to grow more and is suffocating itself out and then dies. Algae to this extreme will die before orchid roots will. But here is the difference from algae on roots out in nature and what we have in our pots. In nature, the dead algae will wash off when it rains, or during the dry periods, it will just fall to the ground below the orchid, leaving live algae behind and air circulation balance is maintained around the roots. That does not happen in cultivation, especially if we grow our orchids with a wet dry cycle. The sporadic flushing in that grow method does not provide enough water to dislodge dead algae to cause it to flush out of the pot and then the dead material turns into the smelly, foul, pungent slick within our orchids. This extreme scenario is where trouble will happen if still not addressed, but we are talking extreme. The point at which algae is a problem is because this dead algae has been allowed to linger in the pot and we have not repotted in many, many years, i.e. the orchids we get from nurseries, they buy them in, they sit on their benches, and wait just to be sold on, very rarely are they repotted. But in our private collections, unless there has been a major disruption that makes repotting obsolete for more than three years, algae in pots does not pose a threat. And algae on mounts or bare root vendaceous orchids definitely does not pose a threat. There's plenty of light and airflow around the roots that the balance remains intact. As we refresh our media on a regular basis, no matter the setup. Although algae, possibly being unsightly, can live in perfect harmony, benefiting the roots because of what it does. During the time that the orchid is freshly repotted, until it is time for the next repot. It does help to control algae if you are growing in clear pots to use a mask to block the light. Know that the use of clear pots is also done to allow orchid roots to photosynthesize, so in using a mask, you will be blocking the light from them as well. Clear pots are also fun because we like to see our roots progress. And sometimes it's also a matter of peace of mind. But for purposes of photosynthesis and then blocking the light to keep algae from growing or growing too fast, using a mask makes that obsolete. Photosynthesis does not happen on the roots if covered by a mask. So we've talked about so many benefits of algae, why is it still the boogeyman? I mean, algae can attract fungus gnats, but other than them just being a nuisance, they pose no threat to our orchids. So why are we so persistent about removing algae, be it from our pots or cleaning up vendaceous orchids from the algae? It's purely mainly for aesthetic reasons because everybody loves that white new velamen that comes out when an orchid root grows. The older an orchid root is, the more discoloration it will have, even if you don't have algae in the pot. But with our periodical repotting cycle that we should be doing, unless once again it has been disrupted by something that prevents you from repotting for many, many years that you normally wouldn't do, the time span that algae is in your pot really is actually a beneficial asset to the root and the health and climate of the pot because I have heard of people soaking their pots in diluted 3% hydrogen peroxide at a 50% ratio, 50% being hydrogen peroxide, 50% being water, using that to remove and kill off algae. And while that is an option to remove algae, the hydrogen peroxide does not distinguish between good and bad cells. This soak will also kill good cells, which could inadvertently cause the loss of good microbacteria. Again, no matter the setup. It won't harm the orchid, but it can disrupt the living conditions in your pot quite a bit. Keeping algae in check with masks, that works. But the best practice is to repot your orchids on a regular basis because you don't want your media to be breaking down too far, algae will not be an issue. Let me just put it out that orchids that are grown in organic media where the culture requires 
is consistently wet or damp media like slipper orchids, mastervalias, draculas, and fine-rooted oncidiums, repots are necessary on a quicker refresh schedule compared to orchids grown in a wet-dry cycle. Algae building up in pots of orchids grown evenly moist is the main reason why slipper orchids and the like are best grown in dark pots, or if you have clear pots, that light needs to be blocked out. We talk about these orchids, especially slippers orchids being semi-terrestrials and the roots don't like the light. That may be a case as well, but mainly because of the setup, because of how much water they need in their media consistently, growing these kinds of orchids in clear pots just encourages a very, very rapid growth of algae in those pots. So, highly water retentive media for orchids, they always go into dark pots and certainly if you see something in a basket like a Dracula, then you can see how the sphagnum moss has accumulated algae within a matter of weeks. And that just goes to show that even if you were to grow a slipper orchid in a clear pot, the yearly repot of a slipper orchid in a clear pot would not even be soon enough because the algae will take over faster and become a problem way before the 12 month period is over. So let me just emphasize that algae in the pot is not a problem. If we don't repot on time and let the algae get out of hand, it is the algae that is actually causing itself to suffocate. It is not suffocating the roots of the orchids, it is suffocating itself because it has used up all the space in the pot that it can, and because there is no air circulation for the algae to live, it dies off, and in our culture, we don't flush enough in order to flush out all the dead material that then forms that yucky, smelly sludge. That is a detriment to the orchid roots, but it takes a long time before orchid roots will actually die because of what's going on algae-wise in the pot. And that goes back to me saying, in extreme cases, our routine of repotting yearly based on orchid, every two or every three years based on media breaking down, is not a risk when algae develops within the pot in that time frame. It is more beneficial, especially if growing in organic media because of the oxygen and the gas exchange it provides. Back in the day when I used to grow in clay pots and organic media, I had algae build up around the roots on the surface of the pot and around the pot, and despite not looking as pretty, it was absolutely no problem whatsoever. Now, growing in the pots that I have, I still have algae building up on the surface of my roots, especially the very, very old one, but inside, because there is no light going in, there is no algae buildup. However, I wouldn't know any different either if algae was building up in my pot because my setup requires a lot of flushing. If you are growing in a wet dry cycle setup that requires wet dry rhythm all the time, the amount of flushing that you do sporadically will never ever be sufficient to flush out any dying off algae. But once again, in a wet dry cycle, the media doesn't break down that fast. There's not such a high humidity environment in our private cultures, putting nurseries aside, that algae would have a field trip in those kinds of pots. But there's one thing I do want to add on, because I've been singing the praises of algae as long as we are not talking the extremes, is that algae on leaves is a big no-no. If we get orchids in from a nursery and the leaves have algae on them, then that must be removed, not just because of aesthetics, but the leaf cannot photosize at optimum capacity with a layer of algae on it. Taking off algae from leaves is best done in several stages, depending on how bad the algae has already layered up on that leaf. Diluting hydrogen peroxide 3% again to a 50-50 ratio with water will do the trick over several applications, wiping the leaf and then leaving it be. Trying to get rid of it all in one application may prove a little bit too aggressive, so I would just say patience is a virtue. If you have algae on your leaves, do it gently and in stages. So throughout this, we've been staring at my Holcoglossum kimberlianum roots, where you can see some newer roots and some algae covered roots. But you can also see that there is absolutely nothing wrong here. In nature, this is exactly what the roots would look like. They would also grow into moss, as you can see at the base. Everything here is in balance. Vandacious orchid roots can, as they age, look really nasty, really gunky, especially in contrast when you see new roots growing and you see the fresh white velamen. In a couple of years, that's all covered in algae as well. 
but there is a harmony going on here. And if you are in doubt with regards to what's happening in your pot and the algae factor is bothering you, look at Vandacious orchids and say, if the climate in my pot is conducive to algae growing, that means my orchid is happy. They work hand in hand. Know that high water retentive media because of the culture of the orchid, algae will form sooner, faster, and then could suffocate the roots but we will be repotting anyways because of the highly water retentive media breaking down faster. Wet dry cycle, algae will accumulate around the surface area of the roots, maybe around the edge of the pot as well. But because of that cycle wet dry, algae doesn't stand a chance to actually become a real, real big problem. If you're growing in clay pots and you have a very high humidity greenhouse, for example, algae may develop around the edge of the pot and all through the surface of the roots, etc. But because there's plenty of airflow, it won't have a chance to become a perpetual problem and turn into that slimy, stinky green stuff that we hate so much. Algae forming on sphagnum moss, for example, around the Masdevallias, or if we're using it for very, very water-needy oncidiums with very fine roots, that is going to be something that really needs to be taken into consideration and a repot has to be done much, much more often to keep that algae in check because sphagnum moss is dead and sphagnum moss compacts algae goes into the little spaces between the sphagnum moss and because it's so happy in the pot air circulation stops the roots will be fine but the algae is going to die because it's suffocating itself out and how do we flush a sphagnum moss potted orchid well once or twice there is no way that that algae, if it has died off, whatever debris is falling off, has any way to be flushed out of the pot in circumstances like that. And that is where the sludge can occur. But the sludge is one thing. Your orchid roots will survive much, much longer than the death and demise of the algae. So you are still in good nick to be able to repot your orchid and algae has no effect on the roots at all. And once again, remember everything I'm saying about any detriment to your orchid because of algae is the absolute extreme case scenario. So I really hope that this was helpful that it puts your mind at rest, that yes, there is an aesthetic side of having beautiful white velamen as opposed to algae covered velamen, but it's all part and parcel of growing orchids. And out in nature, the two work hand in hand, they get along. And even though we're not growing in nature, we are repotting regularly and our vandacious orchids are growing new roots despite the fact that there's algae covered. Even the algae covered roots will branch. So unless you have a real, real aesthetic issue with algae, algae on your roots. Keep your orchid happy, keep the algae happy for as long as the orchid is in that pot because the two of them, it's teamwork and the balance works really well for the orchid. And a quick disclaimer, the reason I have white pots and white masks is only for the aesthetic side of things. It never occurred to me to do this because this way I don't have algae in my pots. This is purely aesthetics and how I like to present my orchids and grow them. That is all. Absolutely nothing to do with algae. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate your time. I look forward to hearing what you have to say about what I've just mentioned. Every opinion counts. Anybody looking for further information can go to the comments and find more opinions, more information. It's always a benefit to everybody. Wishing you a beautiful day on one condition though, that you please stay safe and take care. Bye. Thank you.